Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to St Peter's All Age Service and thank you for joining us. And I hope God pours down blessing on you. The French have a word frisson. It's shiver. I wonder if you could all shiver. <laughs> and uh, coming to worship together, I think, gives us a frisson. All do it together because God's presence is awesome. Last week, I spoke about having a thank you tree. It's just to encourage us to follow that Christian discipline of saying thank you. There's a lovely verse in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, verses 16 uh, to 18. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. So here is uh, another thank you tree. Last time I did it with paper and this time uh, with a, a tree. And there are little, um, little bits of metal to hold it on for me. Um, a paper clip and some paper. And each time I put them up, it's to say thank you. So thank you, God, for all the things that are on the tree at the moment. But thank you, God, uh, for smiles. Smiles really do <laughs> make a difference. Uh, thank you for Jesus. Uh, Jesus, God with us. Jesus, our creator God. Jesus, who brings love and light to a dark world, and makes all the difference, and who's at the heart of our worship today. But I also like uh, <clears throat> to say thank you for family. And family can mean lots and lots of things. Where am I going to hang it? I'm going to hang it on here. Uh, now, that might mean <clears throat> the family that you live with. It might be family far away. It might be family uh, that you remember with love because they're no longer uh, with us. But also, it means the family of the church. And there's a wonderful woman, Olive Oxby, uh, who reached uh, 100 um and she, then she went straight to glory. So she's part of the church family. She had no other family. And she said, St. Peter's is my family. So we thank God for the family of our sisters and brothers in Christ. Uh, women and men, girls and boys. We're all God's children together. And we give thanks uh, for that. So time to begin our worship. One more frisson. <laughs> We're in God's presence. How wonderful is that? So I'm going to say some words and I'd love you to repeat them. So first of all, let me hold a globe up, a globe of the world. Repeat after me. The world belongs to God. The earth and all its people. a tea towel, <clears throat> a symbol of serving and caring. Here are the words to repeat. It's good to live in community, to love and serve each other. A Bible. Love and action come together. And God's word is a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. And now some lovely stones uh, that come from uh, the island of Iona. If the friends of Jesus keep silent, these stones will cry out aloud. Mm -hmm. 
Finally, I'm going to light a candle. It's always a lovely symbol of God's presence with us. So here we go. Repeat after me. We are glad to be in God's presence, to listen, to sing, to pray. Let's begin with a prayer. Lord, you know us, and you know that we can be loving and kind. And you know that sometimes we get it wrong. We're sorry for the times we hurt others. Forget to listen to you, and don't bother to care for one another and for your world. May you forgive us. May you bless us. And may God's Spirit help us to grow in love. It's time to sing. <laughs>
The reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 43 to the end of the chapter. Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Before I speak, please join me in a prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the wonderful gift of your word, the Bible. Help us to hear you speaking to us today through your word. And then help us to do what you ask of us. Amen. What did you get for Christmas? That is the main question that is asked when I speak to family members on Christmas Day, particularly the younger ones. They want to know what I got for Christmas and they are so excited to tell me what they got for Christmas. You know, I have to be honest, when I was a child at school, that was the main topic of conversation on the first day back. What did you get? What did you get? Oh, oh, oh. Everybody wanted to tell everybody else about what they got for Christmas. And even in church on Christmas Day, you know, I had a, a section which I entitled Show and Tell. I had to explain what that meant to some people. You know, they didn't quite understand what I meant by show and tell. Hello, you show your Christmas present and you tell us about it. But we got there. We, we, we heard about and we saw some gifts that the kids had. And then one man, he, he didn't have his present with him, with him but he told us that he got a set of scales and I thought, Ooh, are his family wanting him to lose weight or something? I don't know. But it turned out, no, no, no. It was a posh set of scales to measure his posh coffee every morning. So it was a good gift. Well, I guess you're wondering, what did I get for Christmas? Yeah. Well, I got loads of chocolate. Oh, yes. My naughtiness cupboard is so full with chocolate. It's just fabulous. Um, let me think. I got loads of scented candles, which is wonderful. Wonderful this time of year because you shut your curtains. It's a bit... But you light a candle and the smell, just that. The atmosphere is changed by a candle. It's so fabulous. Um... I got gardening stuff, I got a new bag, I got um, a book, um, one of my uh, nephews and nieces, they, they bought me a little wooden puzzle of the nativity and so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to frame that puzzle, so that's really good. Oh yes, and I am going to be the coolest curate this parish has ever seen because guess what else I got for Christmas? I got a hoodie. Just look at this.
isn't that just great? Did you work out the word? Yeah. So you're going to see me walking around the parish and you're going to think, that woman's got style. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We are so excited to tell people about the good things in our lives. Be that our Christmas presents or if there's a new baby in our family or if you get a new boyfriend or you get engaged. Oh, we want to, we want to tell everybody. We're so excited. But sadly, many of us Christians are not so good at telling people about the most wonderful and exciting thing in our lives. Or should I say, the most wonderful and exciting person in our lives. And that is Jesus. Sadly, so many of us are embarrassed or we're a bit worried about what people might say if they find out that we are Christian. Well, sadly too, our churches can become places where we happily worship Jesus. People can come and join us if they want to. But we don't really pray or think enough about how we will go out of our church buildings and tell people where they are about Jesus and his great love for them. Well, in our Bible reading today, we heard of a man called Philip. And he was so excited when he met Jesus, when he became a follower of Jesus, that he could not stop himself from going and finding his friend Nathaniel and saying to him, I've just met the most wonderful person imaginable. He is the Messiah. Now, Nathaniel's response is not very positive. He laughs because Jesus's hometown is Nazareth. And he says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, you know, scholars think that Nazareth was, you know, a place which had a bit of a, you know, low reputation. And I suppose it's a bit like Liverpool with some people. You know, if you go down to some places in the south, you know, sorry for any Southerners. I was actually born in London, so it's OK. But, you know, some people in the South, you know, if I say, oh, yes, I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> from Liverpool? Oh, dear. And that's what, you know, Philip's attitude was to Jesus. He was from uh, uh, Nazareth. <laughs> and, you know, when we tell people about Jesus, they might have similar attitude to Nathaniel. They might laugh. <laughs> they might think that we're weird because we believe the Bible. But Philip doesn't carry on any argument with Nathaniel when Nathaniel laughs. He just says to him, come and see. And Jesus does the rest. Jesus shows Nathaniel a small amount of his great power. And Nathaniel is convinced. He is a man who really knows him. He is a man who knows where he has been. A man who sees into his heart. And Nathaniel believes and follows Jesus for himself. You know, I was speaking to a person a few months ago and they were telling me how they keep on telling their family about Jesus and the family just aren't interested. In fact, when they tell their family about Jesus, it sometimes causes arguments. And I said to this person, well, why not just leave things to the Holy Spirit? and let him do his work. And you know, 
that carries for us all. We need to do our bit and tell people about Jesus, what he has done for the world and about our own personal relationship with him. But then we should remember that Jesus works alongside us and we should let the Holy Spirit of Jesus do his work to demonstrate his power and his love and convince people. Not all the work depends upon us. So as we reflect again upon this wonderful account of Jesus, Philip and Nathaniel, can I challenge us all to be more faithful in telling people about Jesus, both as individuals, but also as a church. Remembering that this is the work which Jesus has left for his church, for his followers to do. But remembering also that Jesus works alongside us, letting people see his power and his great love for them. When I say Lord of love and life, you might like to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, just as you called the disciples by name to work with you, so we thank you for choosing and calling us to serve you. Lord of love and life, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations and especially our own during the pandemic. We pray for the government to be able to work for the common good. Grant to those in national and local government wisdom to work in harmony and within your will. Lord of love and life, hear our prayer. We pray for the bereaved and all who mourn for those who feel uncared for and unloved, for those who have suffered injustice and are in any kind of difficulty, for those who are not well in hospital and at home. We pray that they might know your loving embrace and healing touch. Lord of love and life, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. Thank you, Father God, that we are your church, the body of Christ in the world. We're grateful for the worship that equips us for the days when we're apart. Help us to see afresh the possibilities of our everyday lives. May we know your presence with us in the potential of the week. Help us to leave traces of grace wherever we are and whatever we do. Lord of love and life, hear our prayer. We gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Strong for the 
Well, thank you for joining us. Again, we're keeping things very uh, basic in terms of our service, so there's not an adult sermon to follow, uh, but we'll uh, grow in confidence again uh, in terms of how the services are produced, and um, we'll look to developing that at a later point. Um, good news in answer to prayer uh, we have a new PCC secretary. So uh, thank you for that. God keeps answering our prayers, surprise, surprise, uh, in so many different ways. So keep praying, keep looking out for God's answers. Um, just two uh, little pieces of notices, which again, you can always look at the website to follow them up. But the first one is uh, coffee and chat uh, on Zoom. Uh, each Sunday, 11.30 to 12.15. Uh, do email Julia uh, to be sent the link. And secondly, uh, winter quiz night. Sounds great. Uh, Saturday the 30th of January at 8pm. Uh, you'll join, uh, to join, you'll need to email uh, Jen, the hub uh, coordinator. So now to the blessing, and I'll make it so that we can join in if any children are still uh, with us at this point. Because God cares for us, we will care for each other. Because we're part of God's creation, we will care for the earth. Because we are loved by God, we will share God's love with everyone. As God blesses us, may we be a blessing to others. And so may the blessings of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. May you have a God-filled, love-filled, peace-filled uh, week. God bless. I look forward to seeing you again.